Hello students, welcome to this quick presentation to explain your project to. I wanted to make sure that I gave you adequate uh, explanation so that you can get through the work and you don't have any misunderstandings. It's a little bit more than some of the other problems and assignments that you've had in the sense that you're really trying to apply things you've learned. So the overview is that you need to do a memo and in the memo you need to address the five things provided here and that's what you're going to submit and they give you a template for the memo. Um, let's go ahead and walk through this to, so you can kind of understand what's going on. So first of all, let's look at the two things that you have. You have procedures and you have policies and procedures and then you have some ledgers and journals. So let's go ahead and look at that. Here's your policies and procedures and it's only four pages and it walks you through the different areas in the company and uh, provides you with their policies and procedures including accounts payable as well as other areas too. They also provide you with the accounts payable as well as the subsidiary ledger. So here's your, your accounts payable ledger and so this right here, let me explain this because this might clear up a lot of questions. This right here is your, is your general ledger. So this tells you the overall account information for everything that happens in accounts payable and then your subsidiary ledgers are the different vendors that you have. So you have vendor A, B, C, and D. So this helps you to see each vendor and what's going on. Everything in the subsidiary ledgers has to be in the general ledger. So notice you have invoice 4322 for $200, 4322 for $200. That means everything has to add up. If you add up everything in vendor A and B and C and D, it should all add up to be the same information here in the general ledger. However, if you do that, if you add up everything, all the ending balances for vendor A, B, C, and D, you actually get an amount of 5,848.97, which is much different from the general ledger of 2,332.18. What you need to do then is figure out what's going on, why is this wrong, and what policies can you put into place to fix that. That's really the, what you're trying to do here is you're saying what policies are missing, what controls are missing, what kind of errors are being made, and how can we provide a policy that will take care of that so that this kind of thing doesn't happen in the future. So when you come back to your to your policies and procedures, you can see what policies and procedures they have. Some things might be there that you need that are good. I'm not saying that everything in this document is bad or wrong or lacking, but there's obviously some things that are lacking. So you want to look for both. And it's not just an accounts payable. You can find things that are there that need to be there and things that are not there that need to be there and the invoices and the vendors and the receiving procedures and the returns. I mean, just as a quick example for the invoices, I mean, first of all, are these invoices we're sending or we're receiving and paying? Clearly what they're saying is this is an invoice we receive from the vendor that we need to pay. So just make sure we understand which direction we're going. If a circumstance exists where a copy of an invoice is required to be mailed with payment, this must clearly be marked on the invoice. Look, there's nothing wrong with that, but they're missing a control here because you don't just pay invoices unless you have backup for those invoices. You need to know that you ordered it, that you received it, and that the invoice matches those things. Segregation of duties, things of that nature. So just to kind of give you a little bit of information on the kind of things that you're missing already in this policies and procedures. So when you go to write the document, you're not just giving general information about all controls in the world. You're giving specific information. So you're giving this is a control that's important in the world and this is what's there or not there. You need to have specific things from those policies and procedures in your document to show that you understand it. Now you might find enough information to write a hundred pages, but you don't have to do that. You don't have to find every single thing that's missing or every single thing that's in there. You just have to find the things that you think are significant enough for this memo. And that way you can write the five sections as you see on the five sections those are part of the rubric that I'll be grading. So if you're not, if you're missing any of these sections, then you're going to uh, not be able to get full credit for it. So let's look at the template that they provide. The template's pretty bare bones. 
um, it tells you the format that you need to have and then it just says insert your content here two to three pages follow the rubric order and use paragraphs to separate and address each section what you can do is like just uh, I copied it and pasted it and then so I'll take the numbers out you don't want it to look uh, it would be kind of weird for a memo to have numbers and that kind of thing for the CFO but you might use that as your outline and then fill in the information that you need uh, make sure you let it flow and sound like a memo and not like that you're just providing bullet points so that the person who's reading this is getting a clear understanding so that's what you need to submit that memo based off of the policies and procedures taking the controls that you've learned and then applying them to find where the policies and procedures are there and where they're missing you don't have to find every single one you just need to make sure that you hit the key ones that you think are the most important so that you have a couple pages to write on make sure you go through that general ledger for the accounts payable ledger and then you have some clear information on where they're you can show where they're missing some controls because we have things that are wrong not necessarily that you need to fix the journals you don't need to fix the, the subsidiary journals you just need to find out where it's wrong so that you understand what can be done so that it can be corrected and not wrong in the future hope that helps you definitely give yourself plenty of time to work through this and I appreciate your work on this